metaphors that have been controlling our thinking for so long. We have to change the discourse. And at a time like this is a time that that's possible. And they said, you know what? It's a war on terror. Now that's a metaphor. The BBC was willing to say the so-called war on terror. And you know, it makes a difference because the so-called war on terror acknowledges that it's a metaphor. Once the war goes real on the ground in Iraq or in Afghanistan, the metaphoric war is actually killing real people. How do you end a real war when it's controlled by a metaphor? We have to, every one of us, we have to do, follow a simple rhythm. And the rhythm is this. We have to open our eyes to the world as it actually is. Then we have to act within that world without any guarantees. And then we have to doubt that our action was all that great. And the inevitable question, yes, we can what? What can we do? Yes, we can what? Can you think of another president in US history who would be comfortable knocking on the door in a housing project on the south side of Chicago and going inside and having a cup of coffee at the kitchen table. You can't, there isn't one. And this guy did that for years and that's significant. Perhaps more significant, he understands something of what that means. In a democracy, whatever press you put on the administration, you put an equal and perhaps stronger press on yourself. So what are we doing? to transform ourselves to change the world that we're living in? What are we doing to take the energy of this participatory election moment and actually making the kinds of changes within ourselves and within our groups and within our um, neighborhoods and, and within our organizations that we are worthy of the kinds of changes that we imagine? Sio, Osiju, hello my relatives. I didn't come to talk tonight, I came to listen. And I've heard a lot. 